uh, you can become the member of this association you can go to the website you can find the uh, membership form you can fill it up and then to a, there will be a process we have a process and then you can become a member of this i'm sure you will like to become the member of this association and then we also have very uh, i just i want to tell you uh, we have three more uh, very interesting events uh, which will be coming up in future uh, we have a webinar on the failure of reinforced uh, soil walls lessons and remedies it will be delivered by professor uh, g l shiva kumar babu from isc bangalore it will be on 2nd july at 4 pm then there will be a is rakti uh, award ceremony uh, last year uh, is rakti started uh, national awards in different categories like structures uh, outstanding structural engineer uh, outstanding thesis and all that so uh, the winners will be uh, felicitated uh, in this ceremony uh, it will be on 10th july at 5 pm and on this occasion we will also be uh, felicitating uh, professor sudhir jain uh, who is a director iit gandhinagar and who is also uh, the founder member of ias structi so we will also be felicitating him on this event and he will be delivering a lecture on on 10th july so you can join it and third event is uh, it's a refreshing uh, the fresher course it will be a refresher course on design and construction of steel bridges it will start on 17th july and it will continue till 28th august uh, uh, lectures will be conducted on saturday uh, from 2:30 to uh, 6:30 i am sure you must have got the details of all these uh, events and it will also be circulated again to everyone so you may uh, you can uh, like to uh, you like to join it and you may also circulate these information to your colleagues so that they can get benefit from these so now uh, 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 today uh, this webinar will be by mr v n hegde and we have a very eminent uh, panelist uh, mr josh korean he is a senior uh, project advisor uh, k i i r v and then we have professor mike slikes he is a partner slice uh, from his he is connecting from germany and then we have dr harshvardhan subarao he is cmd kanskuma consultancy private limited so we have a very eminent panel today and i am sure it will be a very good uh, discussion and this entire session will be uh, moderated by professor uh, mahesh tandan mahesh tandan is a very eminent uh, structural engineer bridge engineer everybody knows him and he is also past president of uh, this association so now uh, i will like professor tandan to take over and start the event professor tandan टंडन साहब आप म्यूट हैं यू आर म्यूटेड अनम्यूट कर लीजिए थैंक यू मिस्टर मित्तल एंड माय हार्टी वेलकम टू ऑल द पार्टिसिपेंट्स टू दिस वेबिनार व्हिच इज स्लाइटली डिफरेंट फ्रॉम द यूजुअल एज इज द पर्सन हु इज गोइंग टू मेक द प्रेजेंटेशन मिस्टर वी एन हेगडे he is not an ordinary person he is uh, not only a designer he is also been in the construction field for a long time so he is a unique blend of uh, both design and construction and his uh, presentation uh, is going to be based on a paper that he wrote very recently uh, it is uh, published in the structural engineers international uh in april 2021 and uh, before we go any further i would like to request ias shakti to kindly uh, uh uh distribute this paper to all the participants because i think it is something really well written well researched well uh, illustrated as far as the ideas are concerned so uh, just to tell you a little bit about what uh, mr hegde is going to speak uh conceptual design of bridges basically we all know if the concept is right the results 
are almost always good. David Bellington, who was uh, one of the famous uh, academicians, he was a professor in the Princeton University, and he has written some delightful books, uh, at least two or three of them that I can remember, The Tower and the Bridge being one of them. He mentioned what is good when I say results are good. And he mentioned there are these three E's. Efficiency, economy, elegance. That's what you get when your concept is right. Of course, these days we must add another word which is called sustainability because you cannot have anything, uh, any concept which does not include this word. Mr. Hegde's paper, if you go through it, and I'm sure he's going to show some of those uh, fascinating photographs that he has collected. Uh, it starts from the Roman architecture uh, of uh, something like 500 BC. And he talks about mathematical elegance, how everything people uh, thought of was mathematical. And uh, he also talks about the F to the power four, which is also something that David Billington first came up with, which is called form finding by flow of forces, which means that you follow the forces, how they, they travel, and you got a good form if, you, if your form follows that. Of course, we all know Mr. Hegde for his uh, role that he played in the iconic uh, uh, signature bridge, which uh, I'm sure he will talk about as in, in, even in his paper, he has covered quite a lot about the signature bridge, its origin and its, uh, even its uh, cultural connection with India. And so that will be good to hear. And uh, uh, while there are many definitions of aesthetics and so on and so forth, but really speaking, uh, what is fascinating in this paper, which I urge you to read once you get it, is that Mr. Hegde has come up with his own version of it. So we have, we'll, we will have at the end of this uh, presentation, one more definition of what is meant by aesthetics and how to achieve it. So with these few words, I don't want to read the Mr. Hegde's uh, uh, CV because it has already been uh, put in the flyer and I'm sure everybody has read it apart from the fact that he is such a well-known figure in the field of structural engineering. So may I request Mr. Hegde to please take over and start his presentation. And by public demand, we will try to finish by, by 6 p.m. That is what is, uh, people are saying. So we will try to finish it by that time. Okay. The, of course, Mr. Hegde's lecture will be followed by panel, uh, panel discussions, and we've got such an eminent uh, 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 panel, panel that uh, each one of them can, you know, <laughs> make presentations extempore by themselves. But we will try to see how we can still finish it by six o'clock. But all panelists will be given the opportunity to talk about whatever Mr. Hegde has spoken, maybe dissect it, say something on their, uh, what they have to, and maybe come up with their own version of what is aesthetics and how uh, structures should be conceived. So with these few words, Mr. Hegde, it's all yours. Ah, you, you are muted, Mr. Yeah, 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 yeah. Am I audible now? Am I audible? Yes, yes. Yeah. 
uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Tandan, for that uh, inimitable style of uh, introduction. And also, as usual, you have come fully prepared for this uh, presentation of mine. I don't think I would have expected uh, a much better introduction than what uh, I received from you today. And I am very grateful to you for uh, introducing me so, so elaborately. I don't know whether I deserve the compliments which you have given in your uh, introduction. I'm also very delighted today to have uh, uh, the, the panelists like uh, Dr. Mike, uh, Mike Slice, uh, Dr. Subarov, Joe Skurian, and moderator himself, Professor Tendon, among us. Uh, they are the heavyweights and the stalwarts in their, in their field and the industry. In fact, I'm really honored to have them as a panelist, and I look forward uh, to really listen to them in the future. The precursor to this uh, presentation, as Professor Tendon has explained, is uh, some of the papers which I've written. Among them, these are these three papers which are on the screen is uh, very, very important papers. Out of these three papers, two of the, them have been published in, uh, uh, during the COVID period, in the last two year, one, one and a half years, and uh, which has appeared in uh, Structural Concrete uh, uh, Journal of FIB, as well as the last one, which I'm going to present, is on the basis of the uh, paper that is the conceptual design of bridges from uh, form finding and through form finding and the aesthetics. In fact, uh, from the beginning of my career till the uh, till now, I've been always I was always fascinated with the hyperbolic profile of the natural draft cooling tars and the conical profile of the tall chimneys, the arch uh, profiles of the arch bridges, parabolic profile of the cantilever bridges as well as uh, the cable supported bridge uh, profiles, the hanging profiles. And in the initial stages of my career, I always uh, was, uh, uh, mis I mistook uh, the aesthetic uh, uh, appeal is the reason for all these shapes. I never thought it, it's, it has to resist the uh, forces. That is why the particular shape is there. As such, in the beginning of the career, whatever the papers which I have published, almost a dozen of papers I've written. It's all about the aesthetics of the structures. However, lately I realized it's not that the aesthetic which is responsible for the, uh, the structural uh, forms. There are so many other aspects. And as such, I went on researching the literature to find out how the form of a structure or uh, the structural form is conceived. And these two papers, uh, these three papers are the result of that. And in fact, this uh, presentation is going to be the condensation of uh, these three papers, which you see on the screen. In my own way, I have just tried to define this uh, conceptual design. Uh, the conceptual design of the structure is a process of form finding by incorporating aesthetics while being germane to socio-cultural context. Three words, three keywords in this uh, the definition, if you really look at it, the form finding aesthetics as well as the socio cultural context. In fact, my presentation is going to be the concoction of all these three keywords, basically. Just uh, to study the evolution of the form finding and aesthetics of the bridges from the ancient time, if you really look at it, uh, uh, even uh, uh, during the uh, fifth century uh, BC, during the Greek architecture, most of the structures which they conceived. Most of the buildings like Acropolis, uh, as well as the temples and the other buildings, they always found those structures on the elevated ground, as you can see here on the right hand side, just to make sure this structure is always aesthetically appealing by way of its exposure to the daylight as well as the moonlight and from all angles, boldly it can be seen. The structural forms which were used in that era were the columns, lintels, as well as the walls, as has been recorded in the literature. When we come to the architectural revolution, which is also called as a, a Roman uh, a concrete revolution, that time the concrete uh, was the ashlar concrete, what they used to call it as. That is nothing but a, a mix of lime, mortar, and the water. And that used to be called as uh, the concrete. And they used to be fond of the structural forms like the arches, walls, as well as the domes. In fact, if you look back, this arches, walls, and the domes are the epitome of form uh, finding by the flow of the forces. They may not have done it consciously, but they had the intuition about the uh, structural 
resistance or the for how the structure is resisting the forces accordingly they form the forms for the robust uh, aqueducts as well as the bridges as you can see here and also they had the sense of uh, aesthetics in the sense their sense of aesthetic was by provision of uh, embellishments like the gateways as you can see here in the form of vault and also the statues on the bridge which you can see here statues so it was a sort of a symbolism and 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 this symbolism reflected the idiosyncrasies of the rulers at that particular point of time as uh, fridge uh, leonard states in one of his books called broken now come to this you know it, it really if you really look at the aesthetics being recognized uh, consciously and to be incorporated in the bridges started from the thomas telford's uh, 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 time he was a prolific engineer and uh, his first uh, bridge which was designed aesthetically was the cray gally uh, galici bridge which is in, uh, uh, in 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 the uk uh, scotland basically and this bridge is of that of the cast iron of 46 meters span blending with the environment as you can see here abetted with the crenellated crenellated uh, the towers that's the battlement towers which we call and it it really look at it it, it shows the form finding by flow of force or four, four of the principle uh, principle very clearly as you can see here and the thrust of the uh, the arch is resisted by this uh, uh, by this crenellated uh, uh, what you call it towers uh, that is a battlement towers that gives the additional force over here this very 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 clear that that the, there is a com confinement uh, uh, re result over here and the thrust is resisted by the heavy mass which has been put in the abutment over here the architect uh, gustava and the an engineer and the architect gustava of the eiffel tower uh, fame designed this uh, 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 the mario pio bridge in, in which architectural imprint of 160 meter arch is uh, clearly seen and uh, uh, the four form uh, flow flow of the forces is also seen over here and this bridge is another uh, bridge which is blending with the environment as you can see here this is a photo of the bridge which has been taken recently uh, when i went to the porto for the multi span bridge uh, webinar robling all of you know he was a was a prolific uh, suspension uh, bridge uh, designer and he designed the bridge that is the robling bridge which is uh, uh, in uh, cincinnati covington bridge was named after him when it was designed it was the longest uh, suspension bridge in the world that time and also uh, in his name the brooklyn bridge is also known brooklyn bridge in uh, new york is one of the bridges uh, which is uh, designed by uh, uh, the robling but uh, later it was to be completed by his uh, family members as all of us know what to say about the robert mylard robert mylard took the design of the bridges to the level of the structural art along with the christian man i'll come to him later and uh, his bridges uh, with the uh, deck stiffened uh, arch bridges was likened to the series of the poems by the structural poet you know that was uh, it was said to me and again i'll come to that form finding by flow of the forces is very very em uh, evident over here and following the tradition of the robert mylard another swiss engineer christian men uh you know like uh, found the structure of the form uh in the form for for what uh, uh, we call today is an extra dose bridge but i don't think it's an extra dose bridge it is in between the extra dose bridge as far as the cable stay bridge it's quite slender and uh, he was such a prolific uh, uh, designer uh, christian men and uh, while he was being awarded the doctorate in the university of the stuttgart in 1996 he was said to be the most uh, creative and artistic bridge designer of our times unfortunately Christian man is not with us he expired just before the covid uh, 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 started so uh, if you look at the chronological of, chronology of the form finding of the structures as i explained uh, whether it's in the uh, greek architectural era or the roman concrete revolution era uh, they had a sense of uh, a structural form what sort of the structural form they had to have and also they have a, they had a sense of the aesthetics by elevating the structures on a elevated ground being exposed to the lights and also in case of the roman architecture they embe embellished the structure uh, by with the with the authoritative symbols as well as the statues so, so there is an evidence of aesthetics being recognized in the structural 
uh, forms even at that ancient time. While bridges being consciously designed for the structure aesthetic appeal started from the era of uh, Thomas Telford uh, in the beginning of the first, uh, uh, in the beginning of the 19th uh, century, but the, really the, it was taken to the level of the structural art by the men's time, Christian men's time, as I had explained uh, so far. Having said uh, all these things, I would like to classify uh, the, the form finding into three different uh, uh, categories. Uh, I would like to call it three phrases with the abbreviation as, uh, as I'm going to explain in detail in the further of my presentation. Form finding by following the nature, form finding by the flow of forces, form finding by the forcing the flow of forces. These are the three categories it can be classified and three phrases and the three uh, uh, abbreviation for these three phrases can be given as it is. Let us synthesize this form finding by the following the nature. In fact, this principle was used in the initial stages, that is the initial type. As you see in the nature, you will be wondering the some sort of the rule is in the nature, whether it's a pine cone, shell, trees, plants, flowers, even the space for that matter, there seem to be some sort of a divine and godly rules. It is there in the nature. In fact, these godly and the divine rule in the Renaissance era, they called it as a rational number or a golden section rules. These golden section rules were known by different names and it was said to be in the Renaissance era, that's called the Roman Renaissance era, it was called as a golden mean, golden pie, the divine section, golden cut, golden proportion, the divine proportion as well as the golden uh, ratio. What is this golden section rule? Let's understand that. It's nothing but a proportion. It's a divine proportion what they realized as. The, the proportion which is there inbuilt in the nature, what they call it as a golden section rule. Have a look at it here. What it is basically, if any entity has been divided into two parts, A and B, and A being the longer entity and the B being the shorter entity, A divided B, if that entity has a proportion of A divided by B, the number which is expressed in the nature is 1.6780333 and so on. 1.618, let us to be precise. That is the ratio, the, the, the Renoises era artisans as well as the, some of the scientists, mathematicians thought is the responsible for the aesthetic appeal, which has been all pervasive in the nature. That's what they thought. They called it as, as an irrational ratio. Now, if this A divided B by B and also A plus B divided by the longer portion A, all it comes to the point 1.618. In fact, the, in the two, two century BC, our, uh, our uh, Pingala, who is the author of the Chanda Shastra, Chandaha Shastra, what they call it as, presented a Mount Mary while classifying the longer as well as the shorter syllabus of musical meters, what is what we call it in uh, Sanskrit or Hindi is a Tala, you know, while classifying it, he, he formulated and he presented a uh, Mount Meru. In fact, this Mount Meru or, or the Prastara Meru, as you can see, is of the Pingala, is uh, it's been followed by many of the mathematicians later uh, in the in the in the, in the, in the, in, the, in the, uh, the the tenth century, perhaps tenth century, uh, by the various uh, uh, mathematicians, whether it's uh, Chinese mathematicians, Italian mathematicians, West European mathematicians, and this Mount Meru, they called it as uh, as uh, Pascal's triangle and other triangles by the various people. Even the Fibonacci, a famous uh, Italian mathematician, uh, and uh, form, formulated this uh, series called the Fibonacci series, uh, which is based on the Mount Meru. If you really looked at the look at the uh, look at the history, look at the uh, historical development. Have a look at this Mount Meru, which was pro pro presented by uh, Pingala here. If the shallow diagonals are added up to added up, it, it, it tent amounts to this uh, Fibonacci series. Unfortunately, the Pingala, who is, uh, who is, uh, who is uh, bro, who was supposed to be the, is supposed to be the brother of Panini, grammarian of Sanskrit, uh, is uh, uh, not, was not having 
uh, uh, an entity called zero at that particular point of time. That is the reason in Mount Meru, even uh, you will not find the, uh, the number zero. Aryabhatta found the zero later, and that's why he could not find it. So this mathematician Fibonacci also formulated his mathematical series called Fibonacci series. Uh, this is zero, one, one, two. This is a series. If you really look at this Fibonacci series, again, this irrational number 1.612 and it uh, arises as a limiting ratio. The, what is this number here? Each number is, a, uh, is an addition of the previous two numbers. And also each number is divided by the previous number that gives the number limiting ratio of 1.618, as you can see here, one by one, one, and the limiting ratio as you can go on doing it, Fibonacci series. So this irrational number five was considered to be one of the number, one of the proportion, which, which can be built up into music, architecture, as well as the art. And that they thought it, it is going to be having an aesthetic appeal as we can see here. And this golden section rule also has a threshold of, you know, as you can see here, this is the paintings of Mona Lisa, uh, the old man, as well as the Mona Lisa painting on the right side. And this is a Vitruvian man of Vitruva, uh, the, 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 the 25 BC architect uh, uh, who written a book called The Architectura. I'll come to that later. And all this following seem to be following the golden section rules, whether it's in the form of a golden triangle, golden rectangle, or the golden spiral, as you can see here. This is the assembly of the golden rectangle, as you can see here, of the Mona Lisa here. Again, you see the Fibonacci series here. One, two, this is two, you know, this ratio is 1.618. This becomes three, 5.3 becomes eight, eight plus five becomes 13. That's how it forms. So all these things, you know, like whether it's the music, art, or the painting, music, art, or the architect artifacts, or the architecture has the threshold effects of equipartition, succession, continuous proportion, which I'm going to explain in the form for symmetry, order, and regularity later. And I'm going to explain that. And all this threshold effects has the characteristics like proportion, symmetry, repetition, and contrast. So this proportion, 1.618, what we call it as an irrational number, which is all pervasive in nature, is, 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 is responsible, that's what the people said, people thought. In the Renaissance age, and also uh, perhaps in the architectural as well as uh, uh, the Greek as well as the Roman architecture, if you uh, uh, look at it, what is the principle? Already there is a rhythm and rhyme in the form of the proportion of uh, irrational number five in the nature. The music, art, as well as the artifacts or the architecture is you know formed in such a way that with the same proportion and if it can be incorporated back into the nature there will be a chorus of rhymes and the rhythm that was the explanation that was the expectation of the people during the renaissance area and that is one of the reasons you, you find whether it's a pyramid whether it's an acropolis temples or even the churches and the cathedrals which has been built and which seems to be following this of the, the golden section rules are the irrational number five. And uh, that is what I call it as a form uh, finding by following the nature. And the form finding by the following the nature of, of engineer S.K. Kaspala, while writing about the, the aesthetics of the bridges, he calculates the span, the, 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 the span to rise ratio of this, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, uh, our uh, uh, Robert Mylard's bridges. And uh, he comes to the conclusions, so all this art bridges, which is there has uh, having, uh, 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 is conforming to this golden section rules, old, old golden section rule, uh, rule of that. He calculates for the Stauffer bridge, uh, five to the power of five, 11.09, which is related to his uh, span to rise uh, ratio, Jouard Bridge, Stambach Bridge, Hombach Bridge, and Stambach Bridge, as well as much talked about Sal Salgina Tobal Bridge, as you can see here. He even goes on to explain, even though with the span to rise ratio of Coronation Bridge of uh, two, which is also following. In principle, the arc from itself is said that it follows the, uh, the principles of the golden section rule, irrational number by so it is found to be divine and godly. That's why 
the the gazwala foundation fame uh, of uh, mumbai engineer sk gazwala writes in one of his uh, papers uh, uh, which has been published in uh, the abridged uh, aesthetics all around the world we are seeing the form finding by uh, following the nature so far we'll come to this form finding by the flow of the forces whether it's uh, our two years uh, polonis of the 25 bc who says what is the what is the conceptual design according to him it has the structure has to have a strength that is a formitas it has to be robust and enduring what they call it as utilitas in that language and it has to be pleasant it has to be elegant looking or the beautiful looking venustas if you really look at the strength and the robustness here represents the form of winding by the flow of forces the german architect mag says where intellectual truthfulness of a structure and the form merge it's very beautifully said the beauty starts to shine what he says again when he says the intellectual truthfulness he says the form has to be following the forces it's the forces should not be going circuitously or, or you know round about the way defying the principles of the uh, the gravitational force vector when when there is no uh, such sort of thing happen and it, it it purely follows the form or uh, follows the uh, uh, forces and the structure st uh, starts to shine in its beauty that's what mark says and the the wabi sabi fame uh, architect uh, ando says that ideal structure is one which is minimized so much a barrenness to the such a barrenness that only utility and beauty are left again it is the principle of form finding forces that is inbuilt in it that that can be inferred only the exception is the louis uh, henry sullivan of the architect he says the form following function is very important he is not talking about the form following forces over here he was a designer of many skyscraper in 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 united states as explained by uh, professor tandon in his introductory uh, remarks so the what to say about david billington he was a princeton university professor very prof prolific uh, a professor much talked about his the tower and uh, the bridge is a very famous book in fact he is the one who coined the word uh, the structural art you know and uh, he thought that the structural art is worthy of being exhibited in the museums as well as the exhibition similar to that of the architectural art his theme of the design was efficiency economy and elegance when we are again talking about the efficiency and the economy again is the principle of form finding process form finding by following the process german engineer jock slice our contemporary engineer and the father of mike slice who is uh, among the uh, panelists today advocates strongly for lightweight bridges and structures according to him they are ecological social and cultural they are highly sustainable as they use minimum resources minimum resources against the principle of form finding forces a uh, form following the forces in my principle easily constructible and re reusable so starting from roman arch arch architect vitruvi of uh, 25 uh, bc a contemporary german engineer jock slice form finding by flow of forces seemed to had been a mantra for achieving not only efficiency and economy but even the aesthetics uh, in, in in my view what is the structural aesthetics i am trying to define here and trying to find, uh, provide you a model with in my opinion structural aesthetics is the interplay of the three determinants called structural form surrounding environment as well as the experience of the beholders and uh, the structural form is in the manipulative control of designers whether while forming the structure whether the forces has to follow the uh, form or uh, whether the forces have to be tweaked to the desire of the desire of the designer so that the form is not following the forces by forcing the flow of the uh, forces we are getting it and our form has to be achieved by following the nature that is in the hands of the designer so the structural form is in the in the hands of the manipulative control of the designer and the surrounding is given unless uh, you know like the future vision is there for developing the surrounding and the structural form which has been assumed today has to fit the future vision that is a different issue but otherwise the environment or the surrounding is given and the experience is, has a subjective uh, connotation as all of you know and the adage goes on to say the beauty lies in beholders eyes it's a very very subjective thing but these structural aesthetics in the model which i have 
given over here can be achieved by visual means, which I also call it as an aesthetic enhancer uh, called the simplicity, symmetry, order and regularity. When I was talking about the golden section rule, the same is expressed as simplicity is harmony, symmetry was the equipartition over there, order is again a succession, and the regularity is nothing but a continuous proportion. Again, I'm trying to release, relate this modern visual means of simplicity, symmetry, order, and regularity to the earlier threshold effects of golden section rule of that of the equipartition succession, succession as well as the continuous proportion. These visual means are the aesthetic and answer uh, has the attributes like the utility, harmony, transparency, tenderness, visual stability, balance, texture, color, lighting, rhyme and rhythm, scale as well as the proportion as, as you can see here. I'm going to explain this form finding as well as the aesthetics of the structures of the bridges as the subject is today of that of the bridges by illustration of uh, some of the uh, the bridge forms like the arch form, cantilever forms, as well as the cable supported forms. Most uh, favored arch form, uh, the structural form for the bridges, uh, as you can see from the days of even the, uh, the, uh, the concrete uh, revolution of uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, that time, you know, like uh, uh, it was uh, uh, structural forms for that, uh, the domes, arches, as well as the walls. And they found something divine in this form, you know, as I explained to you. And by nature, whether it's a true arches, whether it is uh, uh, whether it is the true arset, as you can see here, or it is a semi-true arches, by nature, somehow it is mingling with the environment, blending with the environment, and it's blending with the golden section rule, which is all pervasive in the nature. So always this structural form of the art forms, uh, art forms follow the principle of the visual simplicity, symmetry, and order, and the regularity, as you can see here. It doesn't uh, require the much explanation. As uh, the nowadays buzzword, uh, Professor Tandon explained, the sustainability is also can be very much attached to this art forms, as you can see here. Even uh, from the uh, architectural revolution era, the of the uh, the bridges as well as uh, aqueducts, the robust aqueducts has been enduring even on that day. What is the reason? What is the secret of that? According to me, it's because the most of the components of this arch bridges are subjected to the axial forces without being subjected to the flexure, whether it's the axial tension or whether it's the axial compression. That is why this is the most uh, uh, robust or enduring as well as the sustainable structural form which you can find it. Whenever we are envisaging the long span bridges uh, before the invention of the cable stay bridges or before the adoption of the cable stay bridges, it's always the cantilever bridges uh, which was adopted. Cantilever bridges can, can be well blended with the mountainous drawback backdrop as you can see here. And also the, also the gorges and valleys, the long cantilever bridges that can be adopted even across the creeks and the rivers, uh, the long cantilever bridges can be adopted. And it is beautiful bridges. The, 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 these bridges in the, against the mountainous backdrop can uh, follow the contours of the backdrop, as you can see here, and merge with the background without being imposed on the environment or the surrounding, neither the surrounding imposing on this uh, bridges, a long cantilever bridges, as you can see here. And it can be made to be looking aesthetically beautiful. And uh, some of the aesthetic uh, 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 enhancer are the visual uh, means of enhancing the aesthetics of the cantilever bridges are the simplicity, which can be achieved by the minimum variety of the, uh, the structural members and the continuous lines without being uh, breaks, having the breaks as you can see here and having a parabolic uh, uh, profile over there. Under the cantilever span, you can have a transparency in the sense the long span and the parabolic uh, profile will be giving the largest space to increase the transparency of the bridges. This is all simplicity blending with the environment. We can also provide the symmetry in the cant cantilever bridges, as you can see here, to enhance the, the beauty of it. The order is achieved by having the same spans for a multi-span cantilever bridge. And also, when you have got a parabolic profile and if you have a multiple spans, to make sure that the span to parabolic length ratio is same so that the order is 
order is uh, achieved, uh, which enhances the beauty of this uh, multi-span cantilever bridges. When there is a terrain is, uh, you know, having a gradation, which is uh, uh, treacherous as you can see here, and you can have the span to height ratio of the piers in such a way that uh, the span to height ratio is same, the inducing some sort of a regularity uh, in the bridge and which enhances again the beauty of the bridge as you can see here in this particular, this one. Coming to this cable supported bridges, what to say on this uh, cable supported bridges? Cable supported bridges epitomizes the concept of the form finding by flow of the process. Each and every cable supported bridge component, whether it's a suspender, suspenders in the suspension bridges, suspension cables, or the cables in the cable stay bridges, the pylons, or the decks, all are very slender and it, 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 it expresses the functionality of it very clearly. And uh, the connoisseurs of uh, cable state bridges like uh, Holger Svensson, uh, when he was talking on the cable state bridges in one of the webinars which we organized, uh, IA structure organized, in fact, he said, went on to say the, the functionality of the bridges, whether in the case of the cable stay bridges, normally the last span, the side span has a cables, uh, which has a larger cables in numbers uh, because the fatigue as well as the larger tension which is coming over there. And also there is an uplift when the uplift function as well as the larger fatigue as well as tension resisting nature by way of provision of the larger number of the diameter of the cables should be expressed and it should be seen by the naked eye. The functionality of the bridges has to be naked eye. Not only the form has to be formed by finding the force flow, but also the form has to be finding by following the, you know, the functionality uh, or uh, it has to be seen. Then only the cable state bridges look good. And uh, I agree with him uh, fully. And this is the uplift which can be taken, you know, by the provision of the anchor, which is shown to the naked eye. The similar kind of situation is also there in the signature bridge. We provided the pendulum in bearing to take care of that uh, or a rocker bearing there. And that rocker bearing is very much seen and the functionality of that also is very much expressed. Cable stay bridges, as I say, whether it's a cable supported bridge, whether it's a, a, whether it's a extra dose bridges or a cable stay bridge, as you can see here, this is an extra dose bridge by the Ganter extra dose bridge by, I think it's a Christian man or a Metavert, I don't exactly remember. If you really look at this, uh, particular bridges, have a look at the uh, mountainous backdrop and as far as the cloud over here, that the white cloud over here is matching the encased extra dose cables here. This is a, a plate uh, uh, which is encasing the extra dose cable over here. These two are, this are textured and colored in such a way it is matching with the cloud color, which is behind. And also it's of the tall piers as you can see here, which is enhancing the beauty of the structure and also the local tradition and the culture can be extra expressed. This is the Jean Mullah's, uh, the Florida Bridge, Sunshine Bridge. It, it, it looks like a sail of a ship, as you can see here. The socio-cultural context has been expressed, which is, which is expressed by uh, having a navigational span here. The ships, the large ships move with the, the sails aplomb over here, which resembles the bridges, as you can see here. As also here, the approaches to the bridges in a meander provided in a meandering man manner so that the onlookers which have been who are traveling on these approaches can see the bridge while traveling on that and enjoy the beauty of this uh, uh, particular bridge. So the cable supported bridges by provision of the cables as well as the pylons give a lot of opportunities for the designers, uh, the conceptual designers to really enhance the, uh, the aesthetic appeal of the bridges by incorporating the socio-cultural context like uh, coloring, texturing, forming the pylon in a way, expressing the socio-cultural context, etc. It gives a lot of opportunity for the, for the bridges. That is the reason iconic bridges as well as the, the signature bridges, cable supported bridges are, uh, are, are preferred. You see a bridge here, Orinoco uh, in a Venezuela, it's a two single span cable supported bridges adjoined by at the at the support over here by way of a anchor pier and made the multi-span cable stay bridges here again form finding by uh, form finding by flow of the forces force flow is quite eminent these two bridges are you know adjoined are connected together 
by anchor pier here. This anchor pier here clearly uh, expresses the form flow, uh, the force flow over here, and the functionality is uh, quite evident here. Let us talk about this uh, Tinkau Bridge. Tinkau Bridge is another multi-span cable stair bridges bridge which has been designed again by a slice Bagaman and partner. Uh, the Mike Slice uh, uh, perhaps uh, was involved in this uh, particular bridge. And again, the form finding by flow of forces is evident by the, the provision of the, the stabilizing cable, which is traveling from the bottom of the side pylon to the mid uh, pylon, as you can see here, to control the deflection of the a pylon there by the deck and the stabilizing pop up, this one has been given. Another multi-span uh, cable strip with the Milava wire deck. Again, uh, I would like to explain the form finding by flow of principle uh, force flow here. The pier is split. It is not split for the purpose of aesthetic. It is for, split for the purpose of making it slender, flexible at the location of deck meeting the pier uh, so that the horizontal forces arising of the out of the time dependent uh, uh, phenomena like temperature variation, creak and simple can be taken care of here. And also the pylon is rigid in the longitude and direction to take care of the control, the deflection in the tower and also the deck, there by deck. Anitrio bridge, again, the form finding by flow of forces is uh, very, very evident here by the provision of very stiff, uh, the pylons, as you can see here uh, in the transfers as well as the longitudinal direction. So form finding by flow of the forces is very, very safe. Talking about the aesthetics of the cable stay bridges, it's a symmetry is uh, very much essential, whether it's a single span and the symmetry adds aesthetic enhancement uh, to the bridge as you can see here. And also the order uh, the, in the hop configured the bridges, the hop is uh, parallel, the cables are parallel to each other, even in a fan configuration, yeah, configured cables, cables are radiating or fanning out from the top of the uh, top of the bridge as you can see here, but they are equispaced at the deck level and also at the pylon level to induce some sort of an order and that's how the aesthetics of the cable stay bridge is uh, enhanced. In the terrain, where the terrain gradation is uh, varying along the length of the bridge, as you can see here, again the principle which I explained during the cantilever bridge principle, span to depth ratios of the piers span to depth ratio of the piers is varying depending upon uh, this. Here, they could have had the same span length, but the, have, having the same span length for this terrain would not have made this bridge look beautiful. That is the reason that conceptual designer adopted a concept where the span to depth ratio of the pier uh, is adjusted such that the depth of the pier is adjusted to the adopted span, inducing some sort of a regularity here. As I explained, uh, the cable stay bridges give a lot of opportunity for the conceptual designer to really, you know, like uh, express the socio-cultural context in terms of the texture, in terms of the color of the pylons, in terms of having the pylon in a way, it's in this particular way, the pylons are the, the, the outwardly inclined, in, sort of indicated to the onlookers or the travelers on top of the bridge that we are welcoming the people with an open arms, that kind of feeling uh, which will give. So it gives a lot of opportunity for this one. Another bridge form, the cable supported bridge form, the Exodus uh, uh, cable form also gives a lot of opportunity, but the connoisseurs of the bridge design, you know, aesthetics uh, uh, may not like uh, these uh, bridges uh, compared to that of the cable stay as well as the suspension bridges from the aesthetic point of view. Compared to those bridges, it has a sturdier uh, uh, structural cross sections, but it gives a lot of opportunity. And it is construction wise, as well as the design wise, similar to that of the cantilever bridges. And uh, uh, the, the people, contractors who are perfected the art of the construction of the cantilever bridges can use this uh, extra dose bridges uh, design, but they can make it look like a cable stay bridges, as you can see here, uh, a, a sort of uh, exploiting the use of. Uh, uh, visualizing, uh, symbolizing in the visual form, the socio-cultural context, as you can see here. The Durgam Charu Bridge, you know, which was done by Stoop, which uh, won uh, the award for the architecture uh, of the bridge, in fact, and uh, is uh, one such bridge where uh, the, 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 uh, the illusion of the cable stay bridge is induced over here, and also it is blending with the environment over here. Another bridge is Seno Bridge, you know, it is in between the 
cable stay bridge as well as the extra door bridge is a hybrid of cable stay as well as the extra door bridge some of the cables are extra door cables and some of the cables are uh, uh, the stay cables so uh, this is in between uh, that's uh, that is why it's called so the cable supported bridge gives a lot of opportunity for the conceptual designer to inculcate or the include the local culture uh, uh, the tradition of the bridge visualizing the structural form uh, 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 into the uh, uh, expressing the so socio cultural uh, context so so far we have seen form finding by flow of uh, following the nature as well as the form finding by flow of the forces the last uh, form finding phenomena or the phrase which i'm going to use is f to the power of 5 form finding by forcing the flow of the forces the till the time the bridge masterpieces like brooklyn salgino tobel sign sign as well as the sunnybuck took the science of the bridge design to the level of the structural art the engineers found their form by following the forces but at that particular point of time there was also a lot of uh, structures like uh, museum airports uh, stadiums uh, at the stations whether it's a metro stations or a railway stations were coming which was used by the public quite often and uh, some sort of a theme narration or or, or a storyline was to be given to the structures so that the socio cultural context is expressed in those culture so the architectural involved architects involvement became very very important and it was very prominent when the architects uh, Uh, were involved naturally they are very well trained in the in the art of narration storyline build, the building of the storyline as well as the theme and visualizing the same in the structural forms and uh, they are very very good at it and uh, uh, that's why the architects in involvement is also important in my view in these days and uh, uh, the structures was to be designed uh, by forcing the flow of the forces which is against the principle of form following the forces uh, forcing the flow of the forces circuitously or the roundabout way by defining the gravitational force vector and that is how the collaboration of this uh, uh, the architects as well as the engineers uh, were required for the iconic structures as well as the signature bridge because from the social cultural context visualization symbolization of the visual form to express the socio cultural context is required even nowadays by using this principle uh, sculptor sculptor architect as well as the engineer kalatrava produced some outstanding uh, structure in the world and uh, though his structures uh, uh, you know like uh, had lot of fame uh, for its um, a masterpiece aspect of it, uh, it invariably these structures went into time over and as well as the cost over run and sometimes uh, it, it it became also the constructors uh, nightmare but but that is the necessary as you can see from some of his work the outstanding works of kalatrava i think uh, i also feel nowadays that the architects involvement in the iconic structural conceptualization is very very essential take the case of dallas bridge here which looks like a huge uh, uh, instrument and uh, the twisting of the cables is certainly not following the form you know uh, the force flow is not following the form uh, here but the splaying cables on top of the onlookers who are traveling on the bridge Uh, which has a silver color this cables have a silver color it gives a feeling of a ethereal ethereal feelings when they are traveling over here in this bridge and also it it conveys the theme or the narration of a, 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 a an architect that is that is a instrument the mu instrument musical instrument uh, being played the samuel brackett bridge which has been conceptually designed and designed by kalatrava is a, is, is 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 a symbol of change from the past and readiness to the future this uh, bridge which can be rotated 180 degree uh, while the navigational span which has to be uh, uh, allowed under the bridge is 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 is, is showing some sort of a futuristic uh, vision over here the theme is futuristic vision here the sundial bridge again which looks like a bird in flight it it, it symbolizes the overcoming adversity and also it from the various angles it looks like a lovers uh, dancing in tango uh, what they call it as and the uh, alamillo bridge has been uh, spoken quite a, a number of time which is in spain it's a traditional stay cable bridge it is not a traditional key on the uh, uh, the other side of the pylon stabilizer is not used like in the traditional stay cable bridge 
and only the counterweight by the inclination of the pylon was used. A true balancing act, in fact, it's a challenging idea to the conventional force flow through which the pylons holding the bridge together. So all these bridges, the architectural pension of abstraction and symbolizing with the visual forms are evident in, the, in, the, in these bridges. And this architectural pension for abstraction and symbolizing into the visual forms requires the force to be uh, for, for the uh, forces to be tweaked to the desire of the architect or a designer. Here, the force flow is not uh, by the nature a uh, natural force flow, but it is defined the, the gravitational force uh, a vector, as you can see here. But that is the order of the day. Now I'll come to the uh, my topic of the presentation of given after having given the pretext to my presentation over here, I would like to give a vision on the conceptual design of the bridges. In fact, uh, if you go to the literature, uh, you find that not much work has been done on the conceptual design of the bridges. Uh, in my opinion, the father of Mike Slikes, who is uh, there among us today, uh, the Jock Slice, uh, the veteran engineer, and is one of the greatest uh, designers and the engineers of our time. And uh, he, uh, you know, like uh, conducted a seminar uh, under the auguries of IASS so called the conceptual design of structures. That's what I find in the literature. I think that's first, uh, uh, for, for first of its kind on the conceptual design of uh, structures in my view. For his contribution, Jock Slice, uh, uh, whether it's a uh, Akkar Bridge, Second Ugly Bridge, or a bridge, a multi-span bridge, which was uh, uh, proposed by Jock Slice, having a stabilizing cables, as you can see, a part First time it was proposed in 1971 on the river uh, uh, Patna, uh, which was later, you know, used. Uh, the concept was used in the Tinkau Bridge. Uh, what I can see here, perhaps by the Mike Slice, uh, might have designed that. And also the symmetrical uh, cables, uh, asymmetrical cables, table signature, which was made, which is there. The conceptual design, all this, you can see the footprints are the hallmark of Jock's uh, Jock Slice and his contribution in furthering the cause of the engineering in India has been well recognized by National Academy of Engineering by granting him the fellow of National Academy, um, Academy of Engineering uh, fellow, fellowship to him. Uh, that is the Indian, Indian National Academy of Engineering has given him the fellowship. But I think that's not enough in my opinion. He's uh, in my opinion, is one of the greatest uh, designers of our uh, time. In that seminar, the prologue says, the overall quality of many structures today leaves much to be desired. The rapid technological progress does not reflect adequacy in their variety, beauty, and sensitivity. Too often, structural engineers neglect the creative conceptual design phase by repeating standard designs and not sufficiently contributed with own ideas to the fruitful collaboration with architects. Engineers thus often waste the chance to create a building culture. He emphasizes on the collaboration of the architects as well as uh, uh, engineers. And uh, the situation is not uh, very different from that of 1996, uh, I should say, uh, the, as, as has been said in this prologue at that particular point of time. Also the FYB model code 2010 uh, introduced uh, in the design section, one chapter on the conceptual design, the model of the conceptual design, which is found in the FYB model code 2010, is uh, proposed uh, by Jean Pronkais uh, Clean in one of the commission uh, meeting, that's the commission five meeting during the proceeding, which was adopted later by FIB model code 2010. Our past president of the FIB, the core of Spirity has been working on the refinement of this uh, model right now, uh, which is going to be added uh, in uh, MC, uh, the model code, which is under the preparation 2020, and also the, the Corey Spirity, the professor and Dr. Corey Spirity has been arranging series of uh, uh, symposiums as well as the conference on the conceptual design uh, of the structures. One of such uh, uh, symposium is uh, lined up one in September. Those people who are attending this uh, uh, webinar can also try to join that uh, webinar. Even uh, in IABSC, we have a commission uh, on the conceptual design uh, of the structure conceptual it's just called a commission on the conceptual design it's not called the concept of design of the structure so this is uh, some of the things which is happening as far as the literature is concerned as far as the happenings ha happenings are concerned on the conceptual design 
I am here giving to try to give a model of the conceptual design uh, in the form of a determinants, uh, a matrix of the determinants over here. As I told you, historically conceptual design was limited to the term concepts being used uh, uh, closely, loosely. In fact, uh, this model, the crystallization of this model dawned on me when I was having uh, uh, discussions with the conceptual design and of various structures in our stoop and uh, our uh, uh, the chairman Abin Alim Chandani is one of the greatest proponent of the conceptual design. He has, uh, uh, you know, uh, rendered some of the outstanding uh, uh, conceptual designs of, for the stadiums as well as the auditoriums abroad as well as in, 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 in India. And my discussions with Mr. Abin Alim Chandani, our chairman, uh, made me crystallize this uh, model uh, of the conceptual uh, design. This is a determinant. It's a model of uh, four determinants. Uh, of uh, inspiration, corroboration, creation, as well as the actualization. Within this determinants of the matrix uh, of the determinants, we have certain tasks to be operated, which are called the abstraction, conception, and the scientific task, finally culminating into the reality in this model. Uh, as you can see here, the, this model, I call it as an ICA. During the converging process of this model, uh, as I usually like to have the rhyming uh, uh, sense that I just wanted to call this model as I, 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 A, and I wanted to put this as inspiration, inclusion, uh, uh, imagination, as well as the idealization. But uh, later while elaborating on this abstraction, conception, science, as well as the reality, I found it's not possible to match with those words. So I was, uh, I was left with inspiration, corroboration, creation, as well as the actualization. The top row of the model, as you can see here, shows the pursuit of the reality. And the bottom row gives the problem solving as well as the analytic, analytical skills. And uh, this is the one of the conceptual design, uh, which is under a construction now at Sabarmati Bridge, uh, which is on the Sabarmati River, Ahmedabad, which has been done by the Stoop. And the conceptual design has been led by Abin Alim Chandani for this, uh, as, I, uh, as I told you of the Stoop. And this bridge is inspired by the kite. You, all of you know, uh, the Ahmedabad is well known by, for this kite festival. And this particular bridge, a pedestrian bridge of 300 meter, as you can see here, it's inspired by that. It's under the construction. We are expecting this bridge to be completed in another uh, three to four months. And the first column, as you can see here, use uh, the skills of the trying skills, sketching and imagining ability skills, 3D modeling skills, and also the 3D printing skills. Whereas the last column uh, gives the computational, structural designing and the engineering ability in this particular uh, model. Again, this uh, another bridge conceptual design has been incorporated in the model, which has been done by the Stoop for the uh, Deccan pedestrian bridge proposed for the Pune Metro, which is going to be constructed again. This particular bridge is inspired by Pune uh, uh, hat or the pagadi, what they call it as, which is traditionally worn. How an architect is sort of deciphered that Punite head into a reality, you can see here through the process of conception, scientificity, as well as the final culmination, the reality, which is going to be looking like a Puna pit, Puna, Puneri pit here, as you can see here. As I told you here, this entire model of the conceptual design, as I'm presenting here, is the crystallization of my interaction with the architects, uh, Amit Alim Chandani and his team. Another bridge, the Sambhaji pedestrian bridge, which is proposed by the Pune Metro again, which has been inspired by Tanpura, as you can see here. Tanpura is the one this, near this uh, uh, bridge. Uh, there is uh, a, a Bala Gandharva auditorium over there, where Bala Gandharva used to play along with his musicians, uh, Tanpura, a musical instrument, string instrument, which is called which is going to be a reality as you can see here on the right side and uh, which is going to be done again by the Puna Metro as you can see here. The finally, I'll come to my, the illustration of my model uh, by this uh, great uh, signature bridge. I would like to declare here very clearly, this bridge conceptual design is done by uh, uh, Professor Mike Slice, who is uh, among our panelists uh, here and uh, that Dr. Hashavadan Subarov is a 
association with the uh, SPP quoted that the designers for this bridge. He's, he was also involved. And of course, uh, uh, Joe Scorian's contribution in the conceptual design of the signature bridge uh, uh, cannot be, uh, cannot be uh, so, you know, it, 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 it cannot be quantified in terms of the value. That's what uh, I feel. I'm very, very grateful uh, those people are over here. But I was involved as a JV attorney uh, from the inception uh, to the completion of this bridge. I rem still remember the commissioning of, of this bridge on November 4, 4th, 2018, the inauguration by, uh, by KZ Wall. Uh, in fact, uh, I was the JV attorney for the contractors, uh, JV, Yaman, Sidade, as well as the Tensor Sai, and the owners of this bridge is DTTDC. So again, I repeat, the conceptual design of this signature bridge is not my uh, conceptual design. It is all credit goes to this uh, SPP and Tensor JV, and also the DTTDC, DTTDC represented by Joe Scorian, as well as I understand even the RK Bansal was involved during the conceptual stage. And in fact, uh, I see one of the uh, proposal uh, pro presentation by Mike Slice, where uh, even Dr. Subarov, as well as uh, uh, Professor Jog Slice was also there in that uh, photograph. I could not, uh, I didn't have that photograph, otherwise I would have put uh, those photographs in my uh, presentation. So hats off to them, you know, this, uh, for uh, such a uh, beautiful conceptual uh, uh, design. Now I'll try to explain my model. I'm trying to explain or illustrate my model uh, through this uh, signature with conceptual design. In fact, all this information which I've got on the conceptual design through my interaction uh, uh, with this uh, designers as well as the owners, uh, DTDC, during the various stakeholders meeting. We used to have a stakeholders meeting. I used to organize it. We had around 15 stakeholders meeting during the execution of this job. And during the stakeholder meeting, we used to have a lot of interactions. And during this interaction, I could get all these uh, uh, figures. But of course, this is some of the figures which I put uh, over here, which I have taken from the internet over here. And any conceptual design, the inspiration has to come from the leadership. I think uh, without the inspirational leadership of uh, Sheila Dixit, I don't think this uh, bridge would have shaken this form, this shape. And in fact, I came to know that the Sheila Big Dixit gave a mandate to the designers as well as the DTDC, DTDC that I want a bridge which is not built anywhere in the world. And uh, the designers at that particular point of time it came out with so many options, which I'm going to show it to you later. And uh, ultimately through various uh, brainstorming session, the inspiration of the bridge, uh, one is the, because of the tenacious leadership of uh, Sheila Dixit twice, and also they wanted to have a structure which is the twice the height of the Kutub Minar, that's the tallest heritage structure in uh, Delhi and the uh, 73 meter height. And they wanted to have almost double of that, that of that. In fact, the pylon of the bridge is much more than that. That is to show the boldness. In fact, the symbolizing of the boldness and also the Indian culture that is the in welcoming post Namaste uh, can be seen in the visual uh, form of this bridge as you can see here and also the Indian national build, uh, bird, peacock's feather has been represented on the body of the pylon as, as you can see here as a graphic. And again, the graphic is a progressive, uh, the idiosyncrasy which reflects. And uh, I think perhaps the first time in the world the graphic was uh, put on the top of the pylons uh, as you can uh, see here. So it was uh, heavily inspired by the leadership uh, I should say, of that particular day. In fact, uh, uh, the equally important is this bridge would not have been completed with the, uh, without the active contribution of uh, uh, Mr. Kejriwal, Chief Minister, as well as uh, uh, his uh, uh, another minister. And also the RK Bansal at the end of the project was pushing the job very, very uh, ferociously, uh, very, very vehemently, I should say. And without his, their contribution, this bridge would not have been completed. The irony is that bridge, which was inspired by Sheila Dixit, uh, was completed by uh, uh, KZ Wall with his uh, full support and the full vigor. And in, in, a, in a manner, I should say it's a contribute by KZ Wall, ironically, to the Sheila Dixit. That's what I, I particularly feel. At the corroboration stage, the study of the context of the site context has to be done. 
and the, the deliberation with the locals, investigation with the, uh, the site context has to, has to be done. As, you, as all of you are aware that the Delhi is a vibrant uh, architectural city. Uh, there, the amalgamation of the ancient as well as the modern architecture blend seamlessly there. And there are, uh, it's, a, it's, it's a heritage, there are heritage structures, monuments, castles, the forts, I mean, as well as the mahals uh, you find in Delhi. And, and, and the, uh, it is blessed with the river Yamuna. In, on the river Yamuna, there were a number of bridges, but uh, it was yearning for an iconic bridge. And uh, though there were bridges like uh, the externally fisted cable bridge, like Noida Bridge, and also the door bridges, uh, the, like the uh, Pragati Maidan bridges, bridge, that's a cable supported bridge uh, of the Extrados bridge and the, uh, the Mulchan bridge and also uh, was there, but an iconic bridge, an iconic, the bridge in the form, iconic structure in the bridge form, contesting with the Baha'i temple, as you can see was uh, not uh, available there. And the river Yamuna was yearning for the outstanding bridge and uh, which was delivered by the conceptual designers uh, as you can see here, you'll be seeing. Even during the Corabolan stage, I will have to study the materials which has to be used for the bridge and uh, whether the fabrication yard and the casting yard is available, where the fabrication has to be done, right of the way the local construction rules have to be studied. The most importantly, the studies are like uh, wind tunnel testing, as you can see here, the site specific uh, uh, seismic studies uh, in, in case of the uh, the, the very important structures like this. And also uh, we learned a lesson uh, by that because one of the very critical foundation, P23 foundation was uh, you know, lying in a forest area, the geophysical studies, also the geotechnical studies could not have been done uh, with, uh, with uh, a full scale at the conceptual design stage. And uh, the whole design of the foundation had to be changed later, perhaps uh, during the conceptual design, especially when the uh, the rocky strata is uh, encounter uh, with the sloping rock uh, formation, uh, similar to that of some other bridges in the Yamuna River. Perhaps it is nowadays necessary to do the geophysical uh, studies also to just to understand what is under uh, lying underneath the top stratum. So that that needs to be uh, basically studied in addition to the local design codes as well as the uh, standards and uh, uh, this one. Again, it's very, very important to study the closely resembling uh, 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 bridges, uh, which, whether it is done anywhere in, in the world, just to understand uh, what were the difficulties encountered during the design state of such uh, bridges, uh, which, is, which, is, which, is not, which was not done earlier, that the iconic bridges, which was not done earlier, it will help uh, in reducing the time and cost overruns, and also to overcome the potential bottlenecks on the basis of the past experience. Here, as for the conceptual designers, the, the bridge, the signature bridge uh, is re resembling with closer, having a closer resemblance with the Amal Alamela bridge, as well as the Erasmus bridge. I told you about the Erasmus uh, Alamela bridge, which is a bridge uh, which is achieved, the visual uh, form or the structural form is achieved by tweaking, tweaking the, uh, the force flow to the desired uh, way. That is how it is achieved. It's a form finding uh, by the forcing the flow of the forces, that principle has been adopted and that, uh, that is how it is closely resembling with the Alamula uh, particular bridge. And the Erasmus bridge is, uh, uh, has a stunning resemblance to this uh, uh, signature bridge in terms of the deck width, in terms of the span, as you can see here, even in the form, which is uh, similar to that of the Namaste uh, Indian welcoming post form and having a backstake uh, cables, though the backstake cables in this Erasmus bridge was not uh, uh, anchored at the median, but that there were two two plays of the bank, two 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 backstake cables which was anchored uh, at, at, at the railing location uh, in the both the places. That is the difference. But the closer resembling bridges were also had had to be studied during this collaboration stage. The most important stage is the creative creativity stage or the creation stage in my opinion, where the, the, the visual, 3D visual identification has to be done. The handwritten sketches have to be drawn. As you can see here, this has been, I have got it from Mike's slides. He was courteous enough to give me this particular sketches, which has been handwritten by his firm to arrive at the 
conceptual design, as you can see here. The bridge started with the vertical pylon and the arch form also was conceived. Then various uh, uh, inclination of the pylons were studied, uh, various inclination of the pylon as well as where deck is, where the pylon legs are merging with, uh, uh, with the body of the pylon, uh, what should be the width of the pylon and what should be the angle which has to be put all has to be, was, has to be studied during by sketching, by the 3D visualization, by making the physical modeling. Nowadays, even you can do the 3D printing also just to understand uh, where we stand as far as the aesthetic appeal of the bridge is concerned. All this has to be done. And the, to arrive at the graphic, which has to be pre presented on the body of the structure, you can see here, various, they were thinking of providing the Yamuna as an emblem on top of the bridge ulti before ultimately zeroing in on uh, the peacock's feather as a graphic representation of the pylon on top of that, as you can see here. This is a stage, a very, very important stage of, is the creative stage uh, for the conceptual design, as you can see here. Ultimately, the actualization, uh, what I call it as, or the materialization stage, uh, where it is studied how it is going to be built, what sort of materials to be used, whether the materials to be used is a steel composite deck or it's a concrete deck, whether the concrete uh, construction of this uh, pylon of this form can be done easily or not, and also the sustainability, as uh, Professor Tandon said, is, is a very, very important uh, part of the conceptual design uh, these days. What are the materials to be used from the point of view of sustainability, from the point of view of embedded, uh, embodied energy, as well as the carbon footprint, whether using uh, from the construction, during the construction, as well as the material used from that point of view, sustainability has to be understood. And also it has to be understood there could be some components of the bridges uh, like the bearings and the expansion joints and others which, whose uh, shelf life is less of than the shelf life of the bridge itself. Let's say for example, in this bridge, if the hundred years the bridge is designed, you are going to have a bearings on, under the pylon, which is going to be humongous, which is going to be huge, whether it can be replaced uh, within the hundred years or you should have a bearings, which, uh, which also has to have a shelf life or the life service life of 100 years, all these things have to be discussed, deliberated and come to a conclusion during the actualization uh, stage. And also by way of the force flow, as you can see here during the construction, there's a tendency for the pylons to be expanded literally. One side it has to be fixed. On the other side, you will have to have a, a bearing which will allow the splay or which will allow this uh, uh, lateral movement during the construction, which can be frozen later after the construction for the service condition how the deck is going to be constructed, whether it's going to be constructed by Picasso panel uh, made uh, monolithic with the, uh, the composite uh, deck uh, uh, construction, or it is going to be done by the using the bed gantry, how the pylon is going to be construction, whether it's a Picasso fabrication, Picasso uh, uh, segmental fabrication, which is caught somewhere else, brought to the location and erected uh, segmentally, and uh, whether it is done the cantilever method of construction has to be used for the construction of this uh, deck or it has to be done on the staging. All these things have to be studied, studied uh, during the conceptual stage before uh, uh, really conceiving the structure uh, for the final uh, culmination. And after having done all these things uh, during the, uh, I was also involved in the execution of this project. I, I, I have to say that that is the reason I thought since this bridge was very fond of mine and very, uh, very, very uh, close to my heart, I thought I will use this uh, uh, bridge uh, for the illustration of this uh, model. Ultimately, as you can see here in the bottom right hand corner, it is a photograph uh, of the signature bridge uh, folding its uh, hand in the namaste uh, form, having a peacock's feather, the Indian national bird as a graphic on that welcoming the people to the Indian capital, standing in a, in a plum and uh, to the glory in, in my view, that is how the final combination has taken place. So gentlemen and ladies, I'll just coming to the end of my presentation. I started the, uh, my presentation with the three phrases uh, uh, with the abbreviation and uh, two models I gave in between that is uh, the structural uh, aesthetics models in terms of the determinants, that is the three determinants of aesthetics of the uh, structures. And uh, I also give a model 
on uh, conceptual design, what I call it is a four determinants of conceptual design uh, of the structures. It's not just meant for the bridges as uh, Manoj uh, Mittal said in his uh, introductory uh, remark. And I tried to sort of illustrate my uh, definition phrases as well as the models by illustration of the uh, signature bridge, uh, which was uh, very fond of mine and uh, which was very close to my heart and involved from the inception to the commissioning of, uh, of the bridge. I hope that I was able to sort of uh, uh, demonstrate uh, this, uh, uh, the phrases, uh, models, as well as the definition uh, to the satisfaction of the, all the participants, as well as the, importantly, the panels, because the panelists are the uh, conceptual designers uh, 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 of this bridge. And uh, I'm eager to hear uh, uh, the panelists because they're exciting uh, speakers and uh, and also I'm ready to take the questions uh, uh, from the participants. Thank you for your patience, Yari. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hegde. I think the your presentation has uh, lived up to the expectations of everybody. Uh, and uh, it was su such a different uh, type of uh, uh, subject that you chose that it would be of interest to anybody, even common people who are not engineers, even they would be fascinated by it. So I re re repeat my request again to the IA Strakti to please send a copy of the Mr. Uh, uh, Hegde's paper to all the participants. And uh, I think that you can get even more details there as, as compared to whatever was yeah presented that's true yes now coming to the the panel discussion let me just give you a brief we have such an eminent uh, uh, panel rarely we get an opportunity to to have uh, you know people of this eminence in a in a lecture uh, so it is uh, incumbent on me for people who don't know at least to introduce our panelists and uh, so that you can really understand when they speak where they are coming from. The first panelist that I would like to speak, uh, like to introduce is Mr. Joe Skurian. He was the chief engineer for the conceiving, planning, design and construction management of the signature bridge. So uh, as we all know, this is really his dream, apart from the chief minister's dream, uh, Joe Skurian also had a dream about this bridge and he followed it up till he got it through. Uh, apart from that, I would like to say that Mr. Joe Skurian is also the chairman of the BIS committee, which is on concrete, cement and concrete. It's called CED2. And of course, he's a member of many BIS and IRC committees. The second person I would like to introduce, who's closely related with the signature bridge again, it is, the, it is Professor Mike Schleich, who has such an intimate uh, relation, I would say, with our country. And uh, he came to India in the year 1976 with his parents, That's that right. is Professor George Sly. I think probably the senior Dr. Schleich must have come to at the first visit to uh, to, to see where the second Hogli bridge is going to be made. Uh, his current activities and interest are in the field of lightweight structures and solar energy production. And I think that since Alok has also joined us, I think we have to request Professor Schleich to give us a lecture on the that fascinating presentation that he had made a few years ago 
about the 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 uh, roofs of the stadia which are of you know have a very long span and how to make the roof is a is an art by itself and of course professor schleich is intimately connected like i said all as all, not only with india he is having a lot of collaboration with iit madras iit delhi and uh, of course he, he is also connected with some of the projects of solar energy particularly after finishing off with the signature bridge with in in india the the third panelist is uh, dr harsha or correctly speaking dr harshwardhan subarao who is the chairman and managing director of construmer consultancy and he holds a phd degree from imperial college london uh he is the vice president of the iabse zurich and he is a member of tg 5.1 which is forensic engineering and tg 1.5 international database of bridge failures and he is also member of the editorial board of forensic engineering journal published by the institution of civil engineers uk so these are the three gentlemen who are uh, listed as the panelists all three of them have an intimate connection with the uh, signature bridge uh, so let us just get their remarks on uh, the presentation that we have just heard and uh, discuss it further may i request mr jose kurian to give his remarks good afternoon everybody we are nearing the evening and i'm really honored to be among uh, great heads here uh, especially after mr hegde's excellent presentation because uh, it is a very different thing we don't hear that kind of stuff every day because we are immersed in our day to day work of structural engineering concrete and steel so this has been a fresh uh, bouquet of thoughts on uh, how do we do our work in a systematic and proper way but unfortunately whatever he has discussed is somehow not imbibed when we work this is unfortunately a problem neither are things instilled us during our academic and formative years that concepts and aesthetics is the key to what you are going to create for the country uh, and for the future so of course we have seen the structures that has been presented as no country it is universal anywhere you place it they have a personality of its own and uh, and 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 it has been created because of the efforts of a whole lot of committed people who has imbibed the idea of aesthetics especially through uh, conceiving it we when we design that mike i mean york slices rightly put it in his, uh, last when, when he came here and presented that the immediate reaction of any engineer is to repeat what he has done or what he has seen or available elsewhere this is the unfortunate thing that idea to create something new and uh, pursue it and get it done is somehow not in the blood because of 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 the 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 kind of academic uh, the training that we get because of the pressures of the work and because of the lack of leadership of the administrators who of course are the key decision makers in this country very seldom such all these forces come together and then some of them get created this is the thing we forget that we create these structures for tomorrow and this is whatever we create is going to be there to the part of the built environment to be to inspire the people who use them who go around them and who thrive inspiration from those kind of structures this is what we forget in our when we when we 
sit down to create structures like this one. Unfortunately, I as already mentioned that our training uh, and our uh, right from the academic time, this kind of uh, instillment of in, uh, inspired design is required. It's missing. And then because we have already distributed our work between the architect and engineers, and when it comes to building, yes, but when it comes to bridges, uh, that part of design is missing. Very seldom it is being done. So what, uh, fortunately today, Mr. Hegde has gone into uh, 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 his mind, a deep mind, very analytical mind. It has gone into the aspects and brought out ideas and uh, issues which we can discuss and which we can, which can include in our day-to-day -day life and maybe in our textbooks and training material. So this is the thing. But then, uh, because uh, Hegde specifically mentioned all the panelists and Mr. Hegde are deeply involved in the, the design of the, the, I mean, and the evolution of this particular bridge, there the uh, combination of whatever he has discussed happened. Because originally a, a design was, a bridge was assigned by the, by the government to the Delhi tourism. And tourism being a, a different organization well, if we had always, whenever we create, we has to have discussion with the administrators. And uh, Mrs. Dila, Sheila Dixit was the chief minister throughout this period. And she is a very different chief minister when it comes to aesthetic, herself a aesthetic person who think in that lines. So when we discussed about the bridge, we discussed with her, can we do something different? What will be your view? She says, the immediate thing is go ahead, bring a design. So that is the kind of uh, encouragement you get without any hesitation. She didn't get the thing whether uh, money is available or we can do it. No such questions, please bring the design. So that is the thing, that is the attitude of, uh, of, uh, of a person. So we, she said, having said that, we, I had nowhere to go. And that is when uh, we took the help of Subrao, our Harsha's father. I flew down to Bombay and we had a sitting in the blue room of Taj Hospital. We drew out a sketch of what can be done. And uh, that, with that sketch, uh, we said, you know, this is something in which the direction we should have a, because of the value there, cultural things, we can do something like that one. But then I said, can you get it designed? And he said, yes, it can be designed. I have my friend, uh, Mr. York. There itself, he called York. And York said, you know, you send it to me. So he sketched it and, and then uh, immediately flew here, had discussions and presented to Sheila Dikshit. It was a fantastic design to us. So she asked one simple question. York, I agree with you. Oh, uh, but this is the best you can do. And has it been done anywhere? York got the shock of his life. He thought it is true because it is after the hard work of almost 30 days. And uh, Subra was there. York Spice was there. Then uh, she, he said it can be done. Uh, we can do something better, but I need time. So York, uh, she simply asked how much time. She's a very cool headed lady. Asked how much time? He said, I require about two weeks. So she said, take one month and come back to me with the proper design. But then what has happened is the series of designs, whatever has been done was rejected by her outside. One, two, three, four, five, almost 30 designs were done. I mean, we have all those uh, sketches and designs available with her. And she did not do it alone. She called the people, designers, she got uh, uh, historians, and then only she rejected it. It's not her own idea. So that is how we reached the final design. It's a saga. Maybe it was presented later. But that is the kind of encouragement and the vision they had to reach the design, which will include the, include the vision of, uh, of a striving state, as well as the culture of that place. And the namaste came into... Uh, uh, it, it happened and the, 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 the peacock came through again a cultural thing because Yamuna belongs to Lord Krishna 
and Lord Krishna's uh, peacock, uh, you know his association with this one. That is how those things got painted there. So to everything, it's possible to have a, uh, have a cultural identity can be created. Uh, new designs can be created, which will um, enhance the, 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 the milieu, the city, and the country. So that is uh, what has happened through this design. There's some idea of, especially when, when it comes to bridges, because they're not simple structures. When it comes to that, the idea that we should repeat has to go. And uh, the, the designer should be given time. And designers should collaborate, not only with the architects, with the cultural leaders, opinion makers, and other people to create designs which will uh, last forever. And this should be at least a fresh wind in the in a direction of growth of the technology, the growth of the cultural vision of that particular country or the particular station. So this is, I, I conclude there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jose, for giving us uh, uh, all the action that took place behind the scenes and which many of us don't know. We only know the travails <laughs> at P23 and so on. <laughs> P23 incidentally is the famous uh, uh, Well Foundation, which had to be- uh, I know, I know, the foundation. Uh, had to be yeah. had to be sunk in rock, huh. and so new uh, innovative yeah, solutions yeah. were found. Yeah, and although none of these gentlemen have mentioned, we were also connected with the. I know, page, I, know I know. You were our, uh, none of them. You, you guys have mentioned. <laughs> no, no, I am anyway. so sorry because you were part of the part of the proof checking agency and the designers of uh, of the approaches. I am so sorry about Mahesh. I did not. I got carried away. <laughs> but, uh, no. no, no, that's okay. I'm just joking. Mahesh and uh, his firm was associated in two ways. He was partnered with our, uh, uh, with I mean, he was uh, done the design for all the approaches that uh, spaghetti type thing. It is not, a, uh, it is not a simple thing, and uh, the the approaches as well as also the proof designer for the main bridge. <laughs> uh, checker and, uh, and he was there. There, uh, so you don't have to elaborate forget. so much, Joe. Yes, I will not Thank go you. the details of that one, <laughs> but it, 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 it he is uh, he, what we cannot forget that. But P23 design and solution was the swan song of Mr. Subrao, Harsh's father. That was the last work he had done for us, if I remember correctly. He gave the solution to this particular vexing problem before the kind of uh, engineering enthusiasm. And, uh, and some kind of uh, divine uh, uh, decision making is with him. We can never forget him. I mean, in, in, in the original creator of this one, along with sh these two stalwarts. Mike, of course, has done the complete work, but the conception was done by uh, three people. Of course, hats off to them. Uh, Mike, uh, I'm sorry, Harsha, Harsha's father, Mike's father. <laughs> And of course, our Ratan Bartley boy. I cannot miss him because wonderful work has been done by Ratan Bartley boy. So that is how it was created uh, in, the, okay. in the original conceptual areas. So okay, Jose, thank you. Now we turn to Professor Mike Schleich, the designer of the bridge, one can call him. It started yes. with one generation and it continued. Yes. Exactly, and I exactly, think the, yes. the credit really goes to the entire organization of, uh, of uh, Schleich, Bergerman and Partners, uh, because I think that all such projects, even in one organization, is only because of teamwork that it can reach uh, somewhere, apart from the fact that the number of agencies who are involved in, to make this project a success. Okay, Professor Mike uh, Schleich. Professor Tandon, thank you very much for this <laughs> flattering comments and this very nice introduction. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, um, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, can you hear me well? Is the sound yeah. okay? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, Mr. Hegard, thank you very much. This was a wonderfully refreshing lecture. 
and for me a lot of new insights and and especially i liked it that you put all this in the end in the indian context you know because i think that's very important that our conceptual designs stem from the local context from the from the local boundary conditions and that's, that's why i value your lecture very much and um i am also grateful for the nice words you found uh, for my father so i will tell him and he will be very happy also, I'm very happy that almost the entire team of the signature bridge is here. This is, this is so nice. And I just only regret that we cannot meet in person. So we have to meet in person soon again yes. uh, with some samosas on the table. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but but uh, you, you have mentioned, we have heard it a little bit, you know, such a bridge is not easy. And there was countless difficulties to overcome, you know, and it was not always, you know, as, um, as nice, but I think we have overcome these difficulties as, as a team, you know? And that's, I, feel, I feel so happy to see you all because such an experience brings you together for the rest of your life. You know? Yes. And that, that is also what engineering is all about, you know? that, that you, you become friends and, and dear colleagues. And, and I feel that, and that this is also one of the side effects of this bridge in a way. Um, you have talked about, uh, conceptual design, and you have always talked about a trias, you know, like Vitruvius, trias, Venustas, Utilitas, and Firmitas, or you have mentioned Billington, my father, and his architect, Mark. And I think this trias, this difficult, different trias show us that there's many ways to, to obtain a good structure, you know, you don't have to be dogmatic, you can choose your own values. But uh, I think it's very important, and you have nicely shown that that design should always be a conscious process. You know, not just fulfilling the codes and, and ticking the boxes, but re really invest brain and 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 do this consciously. Because in the end, good design has got to do with a quality of life. You know, we want to go out of the house and see also nice engineering structures. And, and uh, let's face it, um, many of the bridges that we see, that I see when I leave the house in the morning are not um, so as nice as the bridges you have shown. There is a lot to be done still. You know? So, and this is why I think lectures like this is, are so important that the almost 430 listeners that we had before um, get the message and that we really try to improve our quality of life by, by doing good engineering structure. So I think there's a lot to be done still. And I think the signature bridge is, is an example of a, of a successful adventure, even so it had its difficulties. And what is missing still, I think, is the lake around it. I'm sure you all agree. This bridge is also the signature behind the lower promise to make this a nice park, to make this a nice lake, you know, this is, yes. so this, uh, to me, this is still work in, in, in progress, you know. But I'm very grateful to be on the panel today and thank you again for this wonderful lecture. Okay. Back to Professor Tandon. Thank you, thank you, Mike. Uh, and now may I call upon Harsha? Uh, mm -hmm. He is not the moderator today, which is an exception, but I'm sure that he'll be. <laughs> Please wow, go ahead. Uh, wow, it's just so lovely to see all of us together on one screen. I took three shots with my camera and my wife, wife to take one from behind me as well. In case it, you know, in case I, so Anita also took one in addition as a backup. But the warmth that you get when you see a piece of structural art as the word was used structural art uh, for all to see and part of us being all of it in its creation it's a great joy to an engineer this is what we want to preserve and keep and build society with i'm i'm absolutely proud that this is something in which we've all been associated i'm absolutely proud that we could overcome all the crazy difficulties we had to overcome and see the structure in place and in service and a joy and pride to modern india it represents a symbol of modern India, the welcoming to the east of Delhi with the namaste is for the development of the east, the, develop, the underdeveloped east, to be developed by welcoming them to the east. The namaste is in that direction, not the other way around. West Delhi was very much developed. 
I, that is the whole idea. The whole ethos was to progress, develop, uh, create an aesthetic structure which represented modern India. That's why steel, that's why the pylon and all in steel. And that's why the creativity switched to steel form representing a modern movement and, and the young India. That was another aside. But to tell you the truth, uh, I, the, the, the lecture that we have had today is something which I hadn't heard ever before in, in India. I have never heard something like this ever spoken about in India. This is my first occasion to Mr. Hegde. Hats off to him for a phenomenal lecture and sensitizing us about the importance of concept, conceptualization, aesthetics being one part of it. There are so many other parts to concept design, which he spoke about, including constraints, the, 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 the role of the administrator, as Joe's pointed out, without Sheila Dixit, this would never have been possible. So it, it, the interaction that we have to build society involves us going to these administrators, convincing them of our need to create aesthetic structures and the fact that the job of the architect, I would say the structural art, art uh, yeah. the art, structural architect or art, is not only to create a, a, a structure, a nice looking structure, but to create the total environment under which could be as, the could, under which we could achieve the total aspirations of man. This was something which was in my grandfather's table, and I grew up looking at it. It was below the glass. You know, he had a number of sayings below the glass of his table, and we as kids grew up seeing it. Architecture is not about just the structure, but it's about something like this, but about creating the total environment under which could be uh, uh, under which could be achieved the aspirations of man. So our job is now to see that this comes into reality. The way Signature Bridge started, as Joe's uh, put it, was uh, uh, that we started with a master plan. I mean, the bridge was an adjunct. The bridge was an adjunct to the whole thing. It was a tourist area. It was a whole tourism move that was there. And this was thrust upon Joe's. And he came down to Bombay. And we three of us sat in the, not blue room, uh, Joe's. It's the, it's the first floor of the Taj, the uh, sea lounge where we were drinking and looking out at the sea over a cup of tea <laughs> and uh, or an evening drink, I remember. And, uh, I, you know, we, we discussed this thing. And uh, that was when we called Yog Slice with this idea. My dad and he had, had had a previous discussion, told Joe, come down, let us discuss this. This is some opportunity. We sat there, we had this idea. And this bridge was, of course, father's thing. But how to sell it to the administration? You know, how, who will buy this bridge in its, uh, on its isolation? So the whole idea of developing the whole environment around the Yamuna as a tourism development point was where this happened. In fact, the master plan was done with con by Constrema in association with Ratan Bhatti Boy, in association with York Slice, in association with Mr. Varma for the environmental requirements. And there is so much in that master plan which still has to be put in place. And this is what Mike spoke about. And a tribute to, we, I mean, it's an absolute, I, 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 you know, we, we admire the work that Ratan was involved with us in, in that uh, master plan too. And that is pending, you know, it, it, if you want to realize the true truth of the structure, it has to be reposed in the environment for which it was designed. Otherwise, the structure remains, uh, you know, beautiful as it were, but not reposed in the, en uh, the envisaged context. So co contextually, it is a little out of place uh, still. It needs the place around it has to be put into a being. And it's a beautiful master plan. I wish they would go back to it. And Joseph's dream was to get that master plan in place. And I really hope that they can do it. And Ratan is deeply involved in that. And I hope that vision will come through. The vision is truly that of Joe Korean and my father to start with. And then this idea was taken to York Slice. York Slice had to put a complete spin on it. When the issue was put, we went with concrete as the first material. That we had so many sessions with Ratan and, and us and George Rice and, uh, and uh, then we realized that uh, this is not representing the, the modernity that we want. Three times we went up and down to Sheila Dixit's office. Three times George Slice came down. Three, twice she threw us out, but this is not good enough, you know. She was tough. She was a tough lady, you know. We used to wait outside. Three of them would go and jog, uh, uh, Mike and uh, uh, George Slice, father and Joe's were going. All like keyed up, you know, to sell the product. <laughs> and then she would throw them out. Then, okay, now back to the table. What do we do? And John would be busy sketching. Many of those sketches you see, the hand sketches that you see, we have hundreds of them in our office. Yeah. And these were just with pencil on the spot. Jog was, uh, you know, making concepts I, and they would discuss. And my, they, uh, Joe's would say, no, no, this is the, immediately one more sketch like that. So this is how the actual aesthetic concept and form took shape. There was no form finding in the sense that it was driven by form finding software. It was driven by human ingenuity. Correct. And the quickness of response to understand the contextual requirement, which uh, Sheila Dixit had thrust upon us. This was not sufficient for her. After we went back, uh, Mike, this is the story which you know of. 
after we went back to with the final form with this fantastic broad pylon which is never built anywhere else in the world something totally unique uh, in in the pantheons of cable stay bridges an aesthetic form in which not a slender pylon but a broad pylon in which we could project images onto which we could put the national flag we could use it as a illumination point and a context for theme lighting mood lighting we thought of all this and went to her you know and that we could put some uh, you know yamuna or the local tibetan culture we could paint something on the pylon etc we went with all these thoughts in mind and then that was not enough for her she said no you have to go to the urban uh, arts commission and charles curia was to you know put a yes or a no the project will go ahead or will not go ahead again we were a little panicked because now this was an interface with an architect and a very powerful architect at that who could say this is garbage you know and then <laughs> out, out out of the window end up project so he was very much convinced we had that was a meeting in the frenji pani in dubrai at bombay and over tea ratan he father jos we all sat down and and some of us from the team we all sat down and we convinced uh, 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 charles curia that this was something worthy and he loved the idea then uh, he then we told him you know it's namaste welcome etc oh he loved that even more and all this sort of thing the whole evening went like this and at the end of the day he said to make the angle it's like a little boomerang you know make it a little bit more back then he said no it's the namaste symbol and the you know the way yeah. you, you bend a little when you say it's a welcome you don't stand like that and say, you know all this nonsense happened i would say nonsense in the sense idiosyncrasy as you refer <laughs> the idiosyncrasies that were manifest at those meetings actually led to the evolution of the form and shape which we now see okay yeah. and then the fact that she wanted something to be at the top a beacon at the top to put the lighting you know it should be seen from everywhere like a lighthouse all of delhi should see it should be twice the height of the these were all the things that were put on us when we start the design so i would say it's a tribute to all of us you know all of us who are here those who are proof checkers those who are designers the whole uh, uh, proof checking of the approaches was done by us the whole proof checking of the uh, main structure was done by tandems so this bridge had the 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 joy of uh, all of us involved in its creation you see and when you create something with happiness and joy you are easily able to overcome every difficulty you know you don't see them as problems per se you see them as problems to be overcome the thickness of the steel was 250 and 4 you know we, we couldn't get that steel we fought we tried nobody was willing to import the steel for us then we had to get fabrication done in china and imported these all the constraints were systematically overcome in this project and the direction that dtdc held and gave through all the stakeholder meetings were just top rate i mean the client's handling of affairs jose's leadership was top rate i mean it this is what you require you need visionary thinking you need excellent leadership you need a team who loves what they are doing and then you create actually structural art i i wouldn't like to call it purely architectural art i would like to call it structural art a simple thing like should the i'm speaking because this is from my heart when the meetings used to take place uh, the 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 you know whether we should put the head plates whether we should have head plates because the tower came in bits you know they came in modules whether the uh, board should be seen and the head plate should be seen on the outside or we should have a smooth surface on the outside pylon so that the joints are not seen now if you look at it the joints are visible because they express the flow and they express the cable on one side and the back stay on the other side and a sort of a bridging between them two and we want to expose our art our structural art needed expression so that head plate shows that they are joined particularly and precisely at that line that is an expression of our art, art structural art form if you like so the head plates are not hidden you see the joints intentionally so so uh, there are many things like this which are uh, uh, aesthetics there are many things like this that come from creativity but above all uh, as joe said it is leadership vision and the convincing and the the, the absolute drive to create something unique and new and be uh, be ready to face all the head on uh, issues that may arise that's what i wanted to tell and share with you all and i'm delighted that uh, hegde uh, venkat made such a presentation and sensitized us i'm particularly sensitized to speak uh, i i would never have said these things if he hadn't brought this into occasion mark today uh, absolutely fascinating lecture uh, the need joe says about teaching conceptual design mike uh, you know we had this discussions about uh, with uh, hugo and with you and uh, uh, and uh, uh, akio and, and we had this some few times about whether we should bring a series of uh, lectures on uh, conceptual design to india so i am requesting you now and uh, we'll also ask uh, 
Jose from uh, FECORS and uh, yourself and Hugo, Hugo and Jose from FECORS, you and uh, anyone else you might like uh, from your company. Can we do a set of uh, courses to ISTRACT and INJ ABSE or all three of us together on conceptual design so that these issues now having been raised really come into uh, the engineer's uh, vision and ideas. This is my request and the joy, I'm closing this with my joy uh, of being with you all together. My, 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 my uh, grateful uh, listings to, uh, to York Slice and I remember my late father and the tributes being paid to him. Uh, I, I, I'm sure wherever he is, he's in the best of places looking down at us and seeing that this is something which he would have loved and uh, seen having happened. And uh, your blessings are uh, with us all. Thank you so much, sir. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. Thank who, you. Who Thank else you. But one minute, who else? But Mike can do it. He teaches architecture in the morning and <laughs> structural engineering in the yes. afternoon. <laughs> that, that's, that's why I said, you know, <laughs> and then we have, we have Ratan and we could do something which yeah, would be yeah, fantastic. Yeah, yeah. That's a very good and idea. Signature Bridge is definitely a case study material uh, that could be used uh, in the Indian context, you know. And I'm sure, Mike, you won't let me down, huh? We have to do it live. And I, I don't want to zoom again. I want to do it in real reality. <laughs> okay, thank you, Harsha, for taking us down the memory lane and uh, telling us more tips and bits of uh, 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 pieces uh, about how and when this project uh, came about. Most interesting. And, and the pride, I, Ma Ma Mahesh, the pride, you know, when we create something like this and we're all involved, do we not feel so proud of ourselves for having done something for society? I know what Joe's been through. I know what his, what his uh, contribution. There is rarely one engineer in this country I would even point to who had done something like what he had done. We all know what we are saying. And uh, hats off to that persistency and that tenacity to push the project through on Joe's part. Bansal Saab, of course, after that, uh, Shishir did push it. There were uh, there was a but the, the the vision and the creativity are a lot as owed to Joe's, I, I would I would say. And I think pride, it requires it, it, it requires a huge team of people. Yes. All to have yes. the same ambition, yes. and the same drive to make this project a success. Only then it really comes about. Starting from maybe the first uh, beer you said uh, you had in that. Uh, so, Taj Hotel, <laughs> which is a part of the story. I mean, all this is a process. And I think a number of people and organizations are involved. And only then we can reach, uh, you know, with the finalization Thank of you. a bridge. I didn't tell you about the CWPRS trips that we did. We did three trips, four trips to Shitole at CWPRS to do the modeling, you know, the Yamuna, because we wanted to put a downstream where we, we had many ideas at that time. And we had to do many experiments uh, with the hydrological unit at uh, CWPRS for the models. I, I didn't tell you about that too. And that was all before the, you know, that was all part of the conceptual design. Yes. Yeah. Okay, That's so we have uh, Alok with us. And I think no, uh, Webinar is uh, complete <laughs> without <laughs> Alok making <laughs> some comments. Well, Although well. I think he missed a little bit of the beginning, yeah, but uh, yeah. I'm sure that uh, he heard most of it. So Alok, yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. yeah thank you, uh, Professor Tandon. Uh, what an excellent uh, presentation by Egedi Saab. Excellent presentation. And uh, I would not like to repeat what others have said. Uh, uh, much more, but I think it was it was a pleasure to hear uh, to listen to uh, Mr. Hegde. And uh, if you see the chat box and the Q and A box, it is full of praises for this uh, presentation. Uh, I just want to make two three comments. Number one, when you have a panel of such eminent people, such passionate bridge engineers who have worked in Signature Bridge. They have hijacked the entire panel discussion on signature bridge. <laughs> <laughs> the title of the presentation was not signature bridge. <laughs> Let me tell you. The title of the presentation was the conceptual design and very, uh, very, very nicely presented by uh, Mr. Hegde, focused on the form finding by you know flow of forces and aesthetics as a part of the conceptual design. Actually, uh, 
I think uh, Mr. Purian mentioned in his opening remarks very aptly, I liked it very much, that probably this con concept of having a conceptual design is not there in our curriculum, not only in the academics, but also even in the practice. You see, we have the concept of preliminary design, feasibility study, detailed design, PPR, DPR, but we do not have the concept of conceptual design. And I think which we need to uh, really put it somewhere, you know, in our uh, documents, in IRC documents. Uh, this is the most inspiring part of the engineering task, but at the same time, the most demanding of all. It requires maximum exper experience. Uh, to come to a concept, a structural scheme for any project. It is not necessarily that it should be only for long span bridges. Even for short and medium span bridges, uh, a routine bridge, if you, uh, is the first part of the conceptualization is extremely important. And that is not given importance in, in our uh, curriculum. And I think that is one part which I wanted to mention. Uh, uh, I, I, I can tell you that if I, I, there are several examples in many of my presentation and I'm sure others, even Mr. Hegde, we have seen that if the concept is not done properly, it leads to many projects, projects. which we can quote. It leads to time overrun, cost overrun, wrong choice of foundation can lead to a disaster. Yes. And uh, this, this is something which, which is also important. And uh, there are research which shows that if you take a good more, much more time in finalizing your concept, you can take maybe double the time, but on the whole, you can reduce the total time of design, detailing, construction significantly if you spend more time on concept design. So uh, I have nothing more to add, only I think I will just very good ideas given by Dr. Harshavardhan Subarao to have some kind of a course on conceptual design to familiarize our uh, you know, young engineers that how important is the critical thinking in the conceptual design stage. And I think if we can do that with uh, help from uh, Professor Mike Schleich, I think we will separately talk about it and try to explore the possibility. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Adok. Okay. I just want to add uh, one thing because you know, with such a, a fantastic presentation and all, people may get uh, swayed by that this is, uh, it looks quite simple. Yeah. But I think that although the, the concept is the, the bedrock on which you are going to build on, and if the concept, once you, all the, the, the problems you have uh, foreseen, at least the ones that you should, you still may encounter something which was not foreseen. In this case, P23 is a very good example. But the what I want to say is that real engineering is that when you encounter that problem, you find good solutions to it as to how to get over it and get the job done. That is, I think, almost as important as the concept itself, because the concept itself does not tell you what you are going to actually encounter when you start construction. And most of the problems that occur during construction, you have to find solutions for them. Anyway, those are my views. Can we take up a few questions with uh, the permission of everybody? Mr. Mittal, can we just see a few questions? Sure, sir, sure. Manoj, you are on mute. Kindly unmute yourself. Yes, sir. There are some questions in the question answer uh, blog. So I think you can take some questions from here. Okay. The first, I mean, the first I want to say that a number of people have asked for slides and so on and so forth. So can you please clarify? I think either Alok or Manoj uh, to what what is the position? Uh, I, I think we can share if uh, Mr. Hegde is agreeable, no, then no, we can share. Yeah, yeah. What we can do, Manoj, yeah. as uh, Professor Tandon has said it, most of my presentation, you know, like is uh, on the basis of my paper, which is already published. Mm -hmm. I can send up, you know, a PDF copy uh, to you and you can distribute to all the 
for yes, yes. That, yeah, that that paper will be circulated to us. Yes, yes, that can be done. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I think that is good enough. It actually it is better than the presentation in the sense that it Correct. is more detailed. More detailed. That's yeah. right. Yes, yes, yes. You don't see Mr. Hegde speaking, but <laughs> <laughs> he's got a lot of details. Yes. Sir. So uh, can I just take up uh, uh, some of the interesting uh, questions? Uh, uh, Mahesh, the YouTube link will be available to yes, all the yes, research. Yes, okay? yes, yes. That YouTube, will be available, YouTube link is available. The website. So the whole 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 lecture you can see it again. Yes. If you don't want to read, I mean that is the other option you already have. Yes. So uh, this question is from Professor Matsagar, uh, and uh, I will take only the part which I think should be answered. It, it appears to me not out of place for the panel members who may kindly touch upon the topic of the beauty of surrounding of the bridge, the polluted water below the bridge and absence of the park that was proposed on the banks of the Yamuna River nearby. Yeah, can I, can I take that question? Can, can, please, please. Yes, yeah, Mr. Hegde. In my presentation, I think I had to complete this presentation in an hour, so that's why I was... Uh, uh, it is there in the paper, as uh, Professor Tandon has said. In fact, the signature bridge area actually was to be developed as a botanical garden, and also it was to be developed as a you know like a tourist attraction. The idea was that, and and that area was to be known by the iconic structure like signature bridge. That was the idea. Unfortunately, by this time it should have been done. There is already a plan, as uh, Dr. Harshavardhan Subarav explained. The full that, master plan is available. Uh, full right? master plan is uh, available oh. for some reason. The river channelization, after the river channelization, botanical garden, and after that, you know, boating arrangement, uh, and, and to develop into a picnic spot or a tourist attraction, and the area to be known by that bridge. That, that, that's what happens in the civilization. Anywhere you go in, in across the civilization, normally the area will be known by the, the, the artifact or a, or a structure which is iconic. The idea was that, but I think uh, Jose will be able to explain it better than me. That, that was the idea to develop that area into a very fine uh, picnic uh, or a tourist attraction, but somehow it has not happened so far. I think that's what- uh, can, I, can, I, can I chip in? Uh, what Hegde yeah. said is absolutely correct. Yeah. Uh, we started, the, the idea was sold to, because being a tourism organization, we said the whole area will be done up and converted into a tourism destination with water as a theme. And this particular structure will be the iconic part in the center of it. So we have created a master plan. Of course, uh, what uh, Harsha said is correct. His, uh, uh, it was done in his office along with the work done by Ratan Batli boy and others. I mean, we have involved so many other experts in this room because there are so many elements which is beyond engineering, engineering and beyond engineering. And that's almost a 700 page document and that was submitted to the government. So when it went to the chief minister, we, she said, you know, how will you handle it? We said, we are going to handle it in two phases. And uh, the bridge will be one because that was very urgent because connectivity issue was there. And the other one will be done in phase two. We can take them parallelly. She said, it's okay. But then, uh, but then what has happened is as the bridge progressed, it went into very, 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 very bad tailspin politics. So that is another story. We'll go in another direction. So ultimately the, the, the bridge went through. But then everybody knows that without the entire area, as the, the questioner has pointed out, the area is polluted badly. And uh, the, the whole idea was to do up the place and so that the whole people from East Delhi who have no places to go, can come into this area and enjoy the water, which is very seldom available in Delhi, and the very large open green areas where the people can come, play, chit chat, and go back. This was the idea. And now the present government, the deputy chief minister, we had a meeting last uh, about. Um, I mean, when the corona started, I couldn't travel afterwards. So he was very passionate about doing the whole thing again. I mean, take, bring it up again and do it. So the, there is a commitment from the government now that we should do up that area. And hopefully this should come, I mean, it should also realize this is my, I mean, this is what I feel and pray. Thank you.
Okay, I also thank, think thank you, so there is a question from Nishad Kulkarni. Yes. Uh, why our IRC design code Correct. don't have any uh, gives emphasis on or even have a passing reference regarding aesthetical design of bridges? Yes. Who would like to respond? May I? Please. Yeah, I think it is not entirely true that uh, IRC has not even had any pass passing remarks on aesthetics. There is no emphasis on that. That is true. But if you see IRC 5, there is, uh, which is a basically a code for general design criteria. It's the mother code. It's, it gives you the, the concept. And in IRC 5, there is a reference to uh, the importance of aesthetics. And then if you see uh, this IRC special publication on project preparation, uh, I think it is a IRC SP 54. That also has a reference uh, to the focus on aesthetics. So they are there on paper, but it is true that um, in practice, as Mr. Kurian mentioned, that there are many things on paper, but in practice, it is not being followed. Okay, sir. Then yeah. there is one question uh, from Praveen Kumar. Uh, sir, do designers has the much freedom from client side or contractor side that he can apply his creativity in the design? Anybody can answer. Any any you panelist. See, in the new EPC contract, uh, many of us are designing now. Uh, Hegde showed two beautiful structures with local expression in Pune picking up uh, you know, at Shambhaji Stadium and, and uh, beautiful structures which they have conceived using a local motif and giving it a, a shape and form befitting of that local motif to evoke the local per person's joy and happiness when they come to the structure. I think so, but uh, the see, the thing is, uh, there can be some the, isolated case where this thing is being applied. No, I think the question is in general. In general. So there are enough now long span bridges uh, 15, you know, six kilometer long extra doors, five, five span multi extra doors, et cetera, et cetera. So you do have a chance in which you can innovate and try and get at least some aesthetics into it rather than not put anything, just put a simple towel, simple cable. You do have a chance to do something, you know, at least with the pylon, at least with the shaping, uh, with the slenderness, you can, the transparency as was put. These things you do have a chance to do uh, something with in the EPC format. And the contractor should be willing to give you that little latitude. Not all do I agree. Because in buildings, no. I think in buildings, aesthetic is the only thing which uh, people are giving importance. Yes. Rest of the things is only, uh, they are being, other uh, things are being compromised. Uh, aesthetic is the primary thing. Yeah. Okay, I, so I think that we are way past our six o'clock. Mike, o you wanted to say something, Mike. You had a point you were raising. Mike? No, but I, I just wanted to re-emphasize the importance of the surrounding and the lake and this recreation area so that the comment of Professor Matsaga was very important. But I don't want to hold up any further. Thank you. Except the promise <laughs> that except the promise that we will be running a structured course on conceptual design. <laughs> yeah, this is I'll try and put uh, I'll get some stuff together on that. Lovely, lovely, Mike. Okay, although there are many other questions and some of them are pretty good questions, but I think we have to wind up because that's the complaint that is we have been receiving, that you people go way beyond six o'clock. <laughs> so, uh, before we close, I wish to thank Mr. Hegde for an excellent presentation and I'm sure that it will remain in our psyche for a long time to come. And we will treasure the paper that he has written. Uh, and I didn't know that it was published in April 2021. Uh, so he's made good use of uh, the, the pandemic and come out with this. Uh, I think it is an iconic paper. Uh, so uh, with that, I think I will now uh, revert back to Mr. Manoj Mittal uh, to say his closing remarks so that we can all go home. 
<laughs> after hearing all the panelists and speaker i don't think i have much to say but only thing i want to say is that it was a very beautiful presentation uh, uh, and uh, the conceptual design the process uh, the way the model he has presented is a very unique thing uh, uh, this this model can be applied to even buildings also any kind of a structure it can be applied because he has tried to put it in a uh, very proper uh, 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 formal uh, uh, kind of a format uh, the way uh, the the conceptual design process takes place and there are various factors which uh, which affect the uh, uh, the conceptual design of any structure including the leadership the the form the functional requirement the aesthetic the environment the material the all the all kinds of things the way they affect the, the conceptual design uh, whether it is a bridge or buildings or anything so you have put it very beautifully in a, a model and you have explained it uh, uh, particularly taking the example of signature bridge and all the panelists have done a remarkable job because they were very associated deeply associated with this project so uh, they also contributed a lot uh, explaining the intricacy is the way uh, the conceptual design was carried out and the problem occurred in the uh, execution so it was a really very uh, interesting and f fascinating uh, webinar i'm sure everybody all the participants must have enjoyed it and that is evident from the uh, feedback which we have uh, received uh, i'm really thankful to mr hegde and uh, all the panelists uh, tanders are moderating it uh, excellently he is always a very good moderator but uh, i know uh, har subara is a uh, was a permanent moderator in our <laughs> events but today this job was done by mr tandon so it was a very nice uh, webinar thank you thank you everyone thank you very much thank you thank you thank you all thank you very nice okay thank you very much